Move out the way, man. People don't want to see you. They're here for this. This is great. But that is the coolest car ever made in the world. I thought the Hoonicorn was something. This is another level. The Hoona Pig is absolutely insane. It's fucking ridiculous. It's just as savage as it needs to be. It's an inspiration, as it always is. I appreciate that energy right there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello everybody, thank you for coming out tonight. I'm Brian Scotto, Ken Block. A couple other people we'll introduce in a minute. This is a brand new project for us and uh, we haven't actually done a brand new car reveal in a really long time. The background of it is why did we build it, right? You guys are familiar with the Hoonicorn, the Hoona truck. We built a bunch of other vehicles that were always purpose built to go do Gymkhana, go make great films. This one, a little different. This one is to go race Pikes Peak. If you guys follow Pikes, you know that this is the 100th running of Pikes Peak this year. And we've got a little bit of a history of Pikes. Film Climb Kana, raise your hands if you know that famous shot of Ken almost sliding off the side of the mountain. Thank you very much. Ken, why don't you give us a little bit about your background with Pikes and kind of why we built this? One of the ways I was introduced to rally was through Pikes Peak. So in the late 80s, uh, Audi brought over a couple of their rally cars and so did Peugeot and raced up the mountain. That just really attracted me to how well all-wheel drive cars worked and how they slid and managed their way up this incredible mountain. So since I was a teenager, Pikes Peak has been something that really enamored me. But in 2005, as part of the first rally championship I ever did, so it was really a dream come true to go do that, but the car was a you know a basic rally car that was a group and lower spec. By the time we would get to the top, we'd be maybe pushing about 200 horsepower. So it was really disappointing. It was like dream come true, but ah, uh, this sucks. Like the car is so damn slow. So when we went back to do Climb Kana, it was actually an, an homage to the way that I saw the car slide and drift the turns racing up the mountain back in the 80s. And so I've always dreamt about going back there, but being able to do it in the top class and the top spec to actually race for the overall. This project here is a lot of great ideas and great connections and great people all coming together and aligning to make a really great project. So do we show it to you guys now or do we keep talking? No. <laughs> Move out the way, man. People don't want to see you. They're here for this. <laughs> There we go, more energy, that's what I like. I'll stop talking now because someone's waving at me that I should stop talking. But I'm gonna let Tim actually explain what's in this thing because the thing's a monster. I could just do a high level what the car is real quick. So beside the obvious, based on a 911, what isn't characteristic is this 911's mid-engine and it's all-wheel drive. I don't think there's ever been an all-wheel drive mid-engine 911, ever. 
because now I know why, because you have to run a drive shaft over the top of the engine. I had to build us this crazy transfer case on the back of the gearbox that then drives this eight foot long drive shaft. And it, anyways, that, that's for another time. But the engine's based on a 2016 Porsche GT3R, the factory race car that they run in um, ALMS or IMSA. And then we redesigned the pistons, rods, head studs, and a bunch of stuff so it could accept boost. So Garrett came on board, laid out a great turbo package. It's the biggest turbochargers Garrett Motorsport, the racing division, have ever produced, ever. So that's kind of cool. And there's two of them. So twin turbo, four liter. The car's gonna run on methanol, like the Hunicorn. We have three injectors per cylinder. It should spin to about 9,600 RPMs. At sea level, it will make 1,400 horsepower. At the starting line, 1,000, and at the peak, 800. The horsepower of this car is an arbitrary number. What will dictate that is how much traction do you have? How much mechanical grip can you make? With an all-wheel drive car, it's gonna matter more than anything because we have a mechanically locked front and rear. There's no center differential, it's just mechanically locked. So you're getting 50% of the power front, 50% of the power of the rear. Rotiform helped us out tremendously building us custom wheels. And this one was interesting because the loads that these wheels have to hold up are far greater than anything we've ever done. And with that, I was very, very demanding to have a lighter wheel than we've ever run. So the engineers went back and forth a lot and just said, this shape, look, feel, everything is the strongest and lightest possible package that you're gonna be able to run on this car. They're an engineering feat just in themselves. Four wheel drive, mid engine, sub 2300 pound, 13 inch wide wheels on all four corners. It's built for one thing. It's built for nine minutes or less at Pikes Peak. First, let me introduce you to a friend of ours, Trevor Andrew, AKA Trouble Andrew, AKA Gucci Ghost. It's LA, there's helicopters. All right, now for a bit of rewind. Uh, we're about three or four weeks out from the event that you're watching, and I'm here outside of Trevor's studio in Hollywood. On the way here, I actually stopped by BBI and did a seat fitting, saw the car in person for the first time, and actually met Batim for the first time face to face. So this whole process has been very cool, but this moment here, we're gonna meet Trevor, talk about the art and everything that went into the livery. I've actually known about Trevor Andrew for a long time, coming from the snowboard world. He was known as a very, very stylish snowboarder in the late 90s and early 2000s. And on top of being one of the most stylish snowboarders in the market, he was actually good enough to qualify to be in the Olympics on the Canadian team. And he actually did that twice. He had that talent at that level. So I've never actually met him face to face. I've just known him as one of the most stylish snowboarders in that industry. But as his career was sort of coming to an end, he had some injuries and he actually started living in New York and making music. And his artist name making Shoot music was there. Trouble Andrew. And that's the first time I'd actually heard that name, Trouble Andrew. So over time, I started to see something else from Trevor, uh, which was a thing he was doing called Gucci Ghost. And so Gucci Ghost was an art style and, and types of drawings that he was doing as sort of an homage to Gucci. And I, I saw that it was very cool, very fun. I really enjoyed the hand-drawn art. It somehow went from a rad, fun art style he was doing in New York. And then all of a sudden, there was this huge leap to doing lines for Gucci itself, which I thought was <laughs> mind-blowing. So in seeing all that art and everything, I've always been a fan of the style that he's done, but I, I never had a connection with him. And out of the blue, Jeff Pensari up at Bald Face had mentioned that I should buy some of his art. I was like, hell yes, I would like to do this, connect us. And I just reached out and said, hey, what do you think about doing a livery for me? He said, hell yeah, and that's why we're here. I've actually not walked in yet. I just met him face to face for the first time today. Obviously been working with him by text, email, Zoom for several months now. I'm really stoked on this whole program and everything that we're doing with him. And I think it's going to make several very different, very dope liveries for my race cars. It's been a very cool process, but now we get to go hear it all from him. Woo! Damn. Yo, good, buddy. <laughs> this is really Welcome dope. to the inside of my brain.
Yeah, I was just saying this outside. Amazing to see the transformation, right? Because we come from snowboarding. So yeah. it's cool to see everything that you've done there. So I always appreciated your style. And then to see that transfer into music and then art. So yeah. congrats. Oh, I'm thank very... you so much. As a kid, skateboarding and snowboarding was like really like my window to art. And you know, I was experiencing all kinds of music that I would have never known about through the films I was watching and getting exposed to from skating, snowboarding, and you know, visual art, artists like Mark Gonzalez. Skateboarding and snowboarding, it's like a martial art more than a sport. I think that there's so much culture within it. And we grew up reimagining a curb, being creative with like the most basic shit in front of you. And I think that that really taught me a lot. Well, I think one thing that skateboarding especially teaches you, snowboarding too, is it's not easy. And if you want to do it and do it well, you got to persevere, exactly. right? Exactly. And I think that applies then to everything else from art to business. It's a way of life. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Because yeah. it's to get, to get that one moment of glory, you know, you got to go through so much repetition, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that that's probably the most valuable thing that I learned for my life in general. Well, let's sit down. Let's yeah. talk about this yeah, stuff. Yeah, man. You know, I run off at the mouth like a soup sandwich, <laughs> so it's all good, you yeah. know? You've made some amazing stuff for us, so let's talk about that process. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that the stuff has come out incredible. Do you, can you give us some background on sort of your thoughts of what you came up with? Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, like, thank you. Thanks for reaching out to do this, because for me as an artist, like, I'm always looking for a, a new way to connect and, and use different mediums to tell a story and, and showcase my art and reach the people. So to like start imagining what a car would look like with my art on it is insane. You know, mm. I'd never done it before. I think for me, a lot of excitement comes from those new mediums or a new platform or a new vessel to get that art on and have it live in the world, you know? So I just wanted to create something that was different, that stood out in your space, you know what I mean? And think about what I would put on my own car. So I just started, you know, hitting the ground with that and taking some of my iconic imagery and symbols and started applying it to the car. And uh, here we are, man. I can't wait till the world sees it, you know? Well, I think the translation of your past and the things that you've used, like the ghost, yep. and then merging that with obviously my persona, yeah. my number, 43. The style of what we do. I think all that, like when I saw the final art, it was really a good merger kind of, of of all these different things brought together. So Yeah, for sure, man. You know, the combination, everything came together except Yeah, I mean, well. we're, we're coming from parallel worlds, you know, yeah. and we're just using different ways to express ourselves and push ourselves. And for me, yeah, it's super fun. I love to look at other people's identities, brand identities, personalities, and merge that with what I'm doing. It's really inspiring to me, actually. And I think that's sometimes where I do my best work is to collaborate with others. And, and that process is, I think it goes back to skating in the parking lot with your buddy, you know yeah. what I mean? And pushing yourself and yeah, having fun. Yeah. And by the way, we worked with Trevor to work out like a program of what we were doing. And he sort of absolutely over delivered in concepts and what he saw as a vision. So it's been able to work really well with what we want to do with the Huna Pig and then with the WRC car. And we're already looking to, you know, the next version of Electricon and how we can apply this livery to the, the Hunatron. So it's really amazing. I, I can't thank you enough. Like I, I love working with different artists because of their different styles and what they bring in. Like right. you said, like how you see Gucci and interpret like yeah. you, what you see for them, you did the same thing for us. And I, I'm really stoked. I mean, from, you know, this sort of lockup like this and the hand-drawn Hoonigan, it's just a great merger of a couple different concepts that worked out really well. I like to take things and make them have the energy of like what we really put into what we're doing, you know, and you're out there like what you do is crazy, you know what I mean? So I wanted to add that, take that Hoonigan logo, you know, make it drip, make it imperfectly perfect. Well, it's kind of fun too going from the It's a Living stuff, it's such He's a graffiti artist, but he does all that calligraphy style and so yeah. perfect that I, I love the juxtaposition of going this way and much rougher. Yeah. And I think it's a fun take on what we do and 
it's something I haven't seen on race cars very much at all, so yeah. I think it's really going to pop. So obviously some of the, the style of the stuff, like the, the ghost outline here, comes from your history of what you've been doing with Gucci Ghost. Uh, but you gave us a lot of elements, not only a lot of art, uh, even writing out the, the Just Don't Die, that has a little background for the fact that I'm going to race Pikes Peak. There, there's a lot to that. Can you give us a little background of some of the patterns and where they came from? Because one of the backgrounds is actually from this floor, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I do paint on the floor, so I've done a lot of like um, abstract works that, that resemble that process or actually are a part of that process. So there's a bit of that and there's a bit of the, you know, the symbology of like, you know, like you said, like the ghost, which I always have used, even predating Gucci, it was like something that was, I grew up in haunted houses and stuff. So like it was, it's always been a, a theme um, and life and death. And I think with the storytelling within art, sometimes it's, it's really fun to use like simple symbols that, you know, almost function like a logo that, Everybody has their own attachment to them, you know, and you can determine what it means to you. And I definitely incorporated that with this livery. You know, there's a lot of story in there. All right, well, uh, one thing that we haven't told in this whole visual story yet so far is why I'm wearing this shirt with gold on it. So you gave us so much content that we're able to create a very, very unique livery for the Hunapig, the Porsche. Uh, but we also have a very unique and very different livery for the Hyundai WRC car that I'm racing in Rally. So I think it's time that we actually show that and show why I'm wearing this gold. Actually, like the art comes from some of the patterns that you use in the back of like the Gucci Ghost one up on the wall. Yeah, I like to to frame things up. The remnants that I've are left over from the process, I've really locked up with different kind of uniform ideas over top that I've experimented with creating monograms over top of this process. So yeah, that's what we did for, for that livery was just kind of blend those ideas, like take something that's really like no rules in the moment and then take something that's more thought out and uniform and place it over top. That's what we did with the Real By Ghost monogram and your car, you yep. know? So I can't wait to see those ghosts flying around, <laughs> you know? Yep. And then mixed in the chrome gold as the, as the pop color. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, thank you very much. It's oh, great to come you, by man. and actually see yeah, the Yeah, anytime, studio. man. Pull up with the car. Take <laughs> me for a drive one of these days, you know? Well, that, well, I mean, past couple of artists have come out for a ride, I, so. I'm with it. You down? Yeah. I, All right. I want to drive, too. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, bro. Thank you, sir. Yeah. This really was this kind of, like, perfect full circle of we had an idea we could talk about the name first which was we called it the pig or the huna pig porkers porsches called it a pig obviously a little bit of an homage to the pink pig and that's where like kind of the ideas came together as we started working and looking for the right partner to go do this project we started talking to our friends at mobile one if you guys know much about racing especially porsches you know the pegasus really sort of lives well on the side of a 911 right there's plenty of guys who have them sitting here on the front fender and that's kind of where it all grew into the huna pegasus thank you everybody we appreciate you guys coming out enjoy take some photos but am i forgetting anything no i think i said everything